Welcome back. This is going to be a real short video about flow batteries. Now, this video was prompted by a response by a comment from one of our subscribers, Helen Lawson. Now, Helen, you, uh, uh, you win the plaid shirt award of the week for your, uh, uh, for your response. Truly, it was uh, uh, fantastic. Now, what Helen had said was that uh, we should combine the flow batteries, particularly the red flow batteries, with ultra capacitors, and that that would then form a more holistic system that would take advantage of the ultra capacitors and allow them to fill in for something that the flow batteries don't do very well, and that is delivering instant current. They uh, have a, a tendency to lag and take a while to catch up, and so consequently you'll wind up oftentimes taking little sips from the grid. Now, uh, Helen forwarded a video from uh, uh, Fully Charged, and this is a video that I've seen in the past when it, when it came out. I would highly recommend that you guys check out this video. It's fantastic. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. Now, what you see here is the control unit for one of these red flow flow batteries. And we'll go through a couple of different screenshots. And if you'll pay attention here, what you'll see is you'll see the kind of hopping lag uh, that uh, occurs with these systems as they try to keep up with the home loads. These batteries don't respond anywhere near as fast as the Tesla Powerwalls do. And so that led, I'm sure, to Helen's wonderful suggestion to then couple that system with ultra capacitors so that then you could get rid of all of that lag. With the lag gone, then that allows you to take advantage of the flow battery's biggest asset, and that is its ability to store a charge. Now, with the uh, Powerwall batteries specifically, though it's true that your round-trip efficiency on the Powerwall through its onboard inverter charger is about 10% in your loss, you wind up with an additional 3 to 5% of vampire losses if you wind up storing that power within the power wall for a long period of time. Say you charge it fully, you know that you've got two, three days, uh, in the case of the Energy Sovereignty Project, four days or so of rainy weather that you're trying to get past. Well, it's a piece of cake to go ahead and charge that system fully, and then you'll weather that, and you'll be able to get through it just fine. But you do actually lose a considerable amount of power through those vampire losses, by the housekeeping losses, by storing that energy in the power wall long term. Basically, the power walls are best for storing it for the evening and then delivering it through the evening. Uh, that way you don't wind up incurring those losses. Now with the Red Flow Flow batteries, they work on what's called a zinc deposition process. Now this was a process that was patented by a gentleman named Ralph Zito back in the early to mid 80s. So it's not a new technology. The first time that I remember hearing about it was sometime in the mid to late 90s. And I remember thinking, wow, this must have come as a byproduct of the plating industry because if you are zinc plating something and you wind up having a contaminant in your solution, especially a salt or something of that nature, so you have a zinc impregnated solution that you then run a current and then that zinc gets deposited on the uh, what uh, on the object that you're that you're trying to plate. If you then turn off the plating machinery, but you leave the circuit connected, you'll start to notice a backflow of current as the zinc attempts to leave the object you've just plated and have that zinc go back into solution. 
And so then as the level of zinc in the solution starts to rise up, then that charge rate slows down, slows down, slows down. And I remember thinking that the person that first noticed that was going on ran, did not walk to the U.S. Patent Office to file a patent for uh, that type of, of uh, battery, right? Because I'm sure as all of you realize, well, okay, if you then have a zinc-rich solution while the battery is charging, and then you store that in a holding tank, you can then, when the battery discharges, you can pump that zinc depleted solution back across those plates and actually highly increase the efficiency at which the system operates. And that's exactly how Redflow does their batteries. Now, we mentioned about the storing of a charge. Once the zinc is on the plate and you don't flow that depleted electrolyte over the, over the plate, it sits there. It'll sit there for a decade and it won't lose any power. And so now we're back to that situation where maybe you need to store power for two, three, four days, right? Well, now you'll be able to store that in the system with zero loss. And so that's a huge advantage. And so with Helen's suggestion then of coupling such a system with a set of ultra capacitors to take over the load, now you have a, a brilliant, complete uh, solution to that. And so then let's take a quick look at the size again. So what you have here is you have a container full of these flow batteries. Each one's the size of a large tote. And the system that we have at the Energy Sovereignty Project, if you wanted to replicate that with these flow batteries, it would take eight to ten of them. It would take eight of them or so if you're trying to equal the capacitive size of our system and it would take 10 to 12 of them if you're trying to emulate the discharge ability of our energy sovereignty project and so again back to what helen was saying is that when you combine that with ultra capacitors you're back right down to that whole eight tote solution now these totes are about as wide, maybe a little bit wider than our two batteries are, so you wouldn't lose too much space there. But if we were trying to replace them in the garage, then you'd wind up having to stack these things really all the way to the uh, all the way to the ceiling, and that probably wouldn't wouldn't work in in your average garage. So you'd have to try and figure out where you'd be able to put them in a shed or something like that but completely doable. The, uh, I think that that would be uh, um, uh, quite a, a viable solution uh, to, uh, uh, instead, of the, uh, uh, instead of the power walls. Now, you would need some additional equipment. The power walls, they e they, each of them have an onboard inverter charger. And that then means that if you're going to set up these red flow batteries, that you need at least one inverter charger. And I would probably recommend setting it up with two 10 kilowatt inverter chargers. That way you wind up having a bit in case for redundancy in case one of the uh, uh, systems goes down, that kind of a thing. And so that would be uh, uh, something that you'd, you'd probably want to set up. But uh, other than that, Completely, completely viable. Now, does one of these systems exist uh, paired with the ultra capacitors? No, nope, not yet. And so, uh, again, that would be something that we would have to leave for more of a do-it-yourself type of arrangement. Uh, I'm not sure how easily you would be able to find a third-party installer that would be able to marry a um, system with ultra capacitors with these uh, red flow batteries. Uh, but, Helen, well done, well done. Definitely uh, you get our, our, our plaid shirt of, uh, uh, of the week award. And so with that, 
If you have any uh, additional questions about flow batteries or uh, how they work or uh, how they might uh, uh, benefit you in, in your own systems, leave a, uh, leave a, a question in the comments. I'll try and answer those. But uh, until next time, we'll see you soon.